In April 1603, King James VI ruled that the name McGregor should be abolished everywhere and that anyone still bearing the clan name McGregor should renounce it or face death. Many McGregors went on to adopt aliases such as Grant, Stuart or Ramsay. Around a year later, 12 leading figures of Clan MacGregor were hung in Edinburgh, with their leader drawn and quartered. In 1633, it became legal to kill MacGregors and hunt them with bloodhounds. But how did we get here? Why was the Crown so hell-bent on destroying the MacGregor clan? Well, it was to do with a battle, um, the Battle of Glenfruin. Just behind me is the, the memorial to the Battle of Glenfruin. But there was various other reasons, and the context of the time is really important to understand. The Crown at this point in time was at war against the Scottish clan system. The Battle of Glenfruin was fought on the 7th of February 1603, and it is one of the most famous clan battles in Scottish history. It was fought between two clans and their allies, Clan MacGregor on one side, and Clan Colquhoun on the other. Glenfruin in general is located just west of Loch Lomond, and it is a beautiful part of Scotland. But why did the Battle of Glenfruin take place? Well, there are a few theories. One suggests that the battle was sparked after two MacGregor men were refused shelter on Colquhoun land and resorted to sleeping in an outhouse and slaughtering a sheep. After being discovered by the Laird of Luss, they were sentenced to death and thus sparked their kinsmen to mobilise in furious response. Another theory however suggests that war broke out between the two clans because the MacGregors raided Clan Colquhoun's land once again. The two clans had been at loggerheads over land for years, including an incident a year earlier at Glenfinless. The Calhouns managed to gain royal support and raise an army against the MacGregors, raising a combined force of 600 to 800 men, including a large proportion of cavalry, whilst the MacGregors only managed to raise around 3 to 400 men. Despite being outnumbered, Clan MacGregor and their allies won a resounding victory. The MacGregors launched a surprise attack on the Calhouns, which drove them back into a trap of a second force they were waiting to pounce. As many as 200 men from the Clan Calhoun force were killed, versus as little as two being killed from the MacGregor force, although this number is disputed. Then King James VI waged war on Clan MacGregor. A royal warrant was signed by James VI on February 24th, 1603, accusing the MacGregors of attacking members of Clan Colquhoun at Glenfruin without piety or compassion or regard for young or old. Their deeds were barbarous and horrible, with this wicked and unhappy race to be exterminant and rotten out. Less than two months later, around April 3rd, James VI ruled that the name MacGregor should be altogether abolished and that all people of the clan should renounce their name and take another, under the pain of death. The MacGregor name was briefly restored in 1661 by Charles II, but disallowed once more in 1693 by William of Orange. It was not until 1784 that the MacGregors were allowed to resume their own name and were restored all the rights and privileges of British citizens. At the end of the 18th century, the chiefs of Clan Gregor and Clan Colquhoun shook hands on the site of the Battle of Glenfruin. It is fair to say that the reaction from King James was pretty severe against Clan MacGregor, but perhaps the reaction from King James wasn't just simply because of this battle. There is a saying in politics, don't let a good crisis go to waste. King James was the first King of Scotland, England and Ireland after the unions of the Crown in 1603. He knew that a strong clan system in the Highlands threatened closer ties between Scotland and England and his vision of Britain. His severe reaction after the Battle of Glenfruin was probably a result of wanting to make an example out of Clan MacGregor and send a warning shot to all the other clans of Scotland. After all, King James sought to make the Highlands and the Islands answerable to God, justice and himself. To find out more about the decline of the Scottish clan system and the role of King James in this, please click here. Thanks for watching. For ways to support, there will be in the description below.